welcome back to Lie Detector. For Helen Hinson, the moment of truth is finally here. Because she's been accused of pushing an elderly patient at the nursing home where her mother lives, Helen says the staff is now severely restricting access to her frail and failing mother. Who's telling the truth in this story? The nursing staff or Helen? One thing's for sure, Helen's mom is paying the price for somebody's lie. Helen, you've come on Lie Detector today to prove once and for all that you are not guilty of having pushed an Alzheimer's patient in your mother's nursing home. You say that you're here today and facing the lie detector because you want to gain visitation rights yes. again with your mom. Yes. We ask you the following relevant question. Did you ever physically touch a patient in that facility? To which you answered no. Helen, the lie detector has determined that you are telling the truth, the truth, that you are telling the truth. You did not touch anyone in that facility. I just want to say thank you, thank you, and never, never give up when you know you're right. Never give up. If it takes do or die, never give up. Helen, what do you say to those administrators who accused you of this horrible thing? They can no longer abuse my mother and break our family tie. They can no longer do it. Helen, your whole theme has been, let's don't be silent about this anymore. Yes. Let's raise our voices on this. Yes. Are you hoping that more people who may be silently going through the same difficulty that your family has faced, do you hope that they will come forward and join forces with you? Yes, I do. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be, and it's going to be for the good. It's going to be for the good, not just for me and my mother, but it's going to be the good for anyone out there that is going through this problem. Don't come out fighting violently, but come out fighting the best way you know how. Come out fighting in truth. In principle. In principle, yes, mm -hmm. and in character. That's how you fight it. That's how you win it. Yes. That's how you triumph. Yes. Anything else that you want to say? Remember, always tell the truth. Always tell the truth. We at Lie Detector agree with you. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. A very emotional story that hits a nerve for any of us with elderly parents. After Helen's visit, we did a little checking at the Medicare.gov website. We uncovered a few very interesting facts. At the nursing home where Helen's mother lives, 13% of the patients there are restrained. The national average is only 7%, so that's nearly double. At Helen's mother's home, 23% of the patients are considered quote, more depressed or anxious, end quote. And that's an 8% increase over the national average of 15%. We are going to send the owners of the facility this very tape, and we certainly hope that Helen can begin writing a terrible wrong. Next up, Ira Fletcher. You should just come and says, come here, you're under arrest. What are you talking about? Now, was this a tragic case of mistaken identity, or did the cops arrest the right robber? Who's the victim here, Ira? Or the mother who says that Ira robbed her at gunpoint and right in front of her small child? I'm the person that you said robbed you. I didn't rob you. Then, Dr. Robert Wood says he has actual proof of a government cover-up. Which one, you say? There's so many. Well, how about the one that says that Washington has been hoarding all the little green men from space to themselves? The cover-up is run pretty much by the government, although there, there may be a time when the government contracted out the process. Uh-huh. <laughs> Your lie detector's about to unravel the secrets of Area 51 for you when we return.
Now, our next guest is Ira Fletcher, a young man who was once dreaming of a successful music career. But Ira's dreams were dashed when the cops busted him for the subway robbing of a mother and child. Since that horrible day, Ira's only been, well, singing the blues, as well as trying to clear his name. As Ira Fletcher tells it, he was on his way to becoming a household name, signed by a New York record label. He believes he was going to be a superstar for his songwriting and singing. And then, in an instant, his life and career were completely and forever changed. About to enter a subway station, Ira noticed a woman crying as she held her child. Ira encountered the crying woman again, this time face to face, as a police officer wanted to see if Ira was the man who had just robbed her. The victim, Anna Cruz, positively identified Ira as her assailant. Ira was handcuffed, led to jail, and eventually convicted of the crime. Ira's label eventually dropped him, and his career plummeted. He comes to lie detector today to clear his name and jumpstart what at one time looked to be a promising future. Ira, you've come to lie detector today because you say you've been falsely accused and convicted of robbing yes. someone. How did this happen? Tell me your story. I have been signed to a record company called Strictly Rhythm and we were preparing for the release of my first single, the song called Free Your Mind. Mm -hmm. And um, the release date was about two weeks um, after this date and I was on my way to the record company to pick up one of my first royalty checks. And uh, as I was walking, I was going to the subway station and as I was entering the station, I noticed the policeman and there was a lady crying, you know, the little girl. And I was like, oh wow, poor lady, something happened to her, you know. And they were looking around the platform for, I guess, whoever had done whatever to her. The policeman just comes and says, come here, you're under arrest. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he said, yeah, you're under arrest for robbery. And you didn't have a gun on you? No. <laughs> Did you have any money on you? About four dollars. If I, if I remember correctly, about four or five bucks. So what happened when the after you you, you spent time in jail? We spent I spent the night in jail and I got bailed out. The record company bailed me out. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when we were in the police car, the policeman said to me, "You know the way you messed up is you threatened the lady's child because she guess she had a, a child with her when the guy robbed her." He's like, "If you do that, the person will never forget your face. Somebody threatens the child, they'll never forget you, and and a jury will believe her word." And then the police had me take a polygraph test with their polygraph person. Mm -hmm. And I was told I didn't pass that polygraph test. So I kind of had no confidence in anything. Which is why I said I'm not going to contest it, just let it go. You didn't fight it? Not at all. You took the rap for something you didn't do? Yeah. Why? Because they offered me just a conditional discharge and no, no trial, no nothing. And I had my life to live. I couldn't even, I couldn't deal with it at all. So you were kind of in denial? I mean, I can't really try to explain it to someone else, but if you're in that position, you know. And I've had a tendency sometimes to shut down on situations and not deal with them. And that's what happened. I couldn't, it's like this thing has to go. So when something like this happens and you're falsely accused and you didn't do it, I don't, you, you're saying that's not even in your nature. No, I mean, of course not. Um, it's just, when this happened, it just came out of nowhere. Because I was dealing with, you know, the record. This was, this was like the realization of uh, like 10 years of dreams. I had been pushing this demo around for like five years before it even got signed. And, um, you know, it finally was starting to happen. But at the same time, you know, all, you know, you're dealing with your own insecurities too. Just how am I gonna be, am I gonna be good? You know, am I gonna be able to make it, blah, blah, blah. And my, I was focused on that totally. Everything down in my makeup. Mm -hmm. and. I was running all that, and then this came out of left field, and it just disrupted everything. And I couldn't, I couldn't really handle it. I, um, I sort of just shut, set that situation down, and try to deal with the record. But because of what happened, it's the momentum never, the career momentum never picked up. It wasn't the same. It's just this past year that I finally really got it together. I said, okay, it's over. Let's just go on. But I dealt with a lot of issues with anger and resentment, with uh, authorities, the police, white people, to a certain extent women.